boy. That interfering, overreaching boy. Reporting to the police. Talking on telephones. <laughs> what I won't do to that boy. My dear. Come in, rat. Sylvia Daisy Pouncer. You know the lady? Know the lady? She used to be my governess, and she's a witch. Oh, rat. And who have you got with you? I make so bold, master, to present my nephew. Make a reference to the gentleman. Hmm. What will you take, rat? Well, I do like a drop of rum. Not because I like it, it's poison, but without it, I can't stand the climate. A drop of rum for rat? Now, help. Stand there and tell the gentleman what you've seen last night. Speak up, Alf. What does he say, Rat? He says there's so many of you here, it's worse than when he was on trial. Ah, oh, oh. happy days, gents. <laughs> Madam. <coughs> oh, that's the stuff. Poison. But I can feel it doing me good all the way there. Rat, speak for your nephew. As ordered, my nephew, yesterday afternoon, went to the drop of you public house, where he'd been told to keep an eye on one that you what of. The old man! The coal hole. You told me all of this last night! The old man decided the safest place to slip away to was Arthur's camp at dawn. Our men went to Arthur's camp at dawn and got him! <laughs> we certainly did. Jolly good cheer, what? One thing I want to know. When the old man left the drop of dew yesterday afternoon, was the box still in his possession? In his pocket, Gub. He didn't hide it anywhere at the drop of dew. He did not. Now listen to me. You followed the old man to Seekings, the home of the boy, Kay Harker. Never once let him out of his sight, did you, Alfred? Let your nephew speak for himself, rat. Could he have hidden it anywhere on his way? No, he kept tapping his pocket to make sure it was there. Tap, tap in his pocket all the way he did. Think hard. It was snowing hard. Did the snow get in your eyes? No, sir. You must have very odd eyes. Boss, let me have a go. You, you saw on the way to that house he didn't slip anyone that box. I take my oath on Hamlet, he didn't. Eh? Not a soldiery pass. It'd be all snow, such as I never. You? Where is the box now? For well, there was no sign of it when we captured him at Arthur's <laughs> camp this morning. What I always say, boss, is... Out! Throw them out! Oh, Get back to your sewer and have a bath! And Charles... Hmm. Go and fetch the little person we wish to see and make sure you kick those dolts out the back door. I won't have anyone listening behind the skirting board. <laughs> <laughs> now, what has the old man done with that box? Oh, Abner, dear, it's too late now to cry over spilt milk. He could have handed it to somebody. The Jones children, or the boy, Kay Harker, your ancient pupil. That little ruffian. You don't appear to have a very high opinion of the boy. He was a child for whom I had the utmost detestation and contempt. A thoroughly morbid, dreamy, idle muff. Anyway, my ideal, the old man would not have trusted such a treasure to a child he had not met before that afternoon. Well, then there remains the guardian, this Caroline Louisa. The mistress of the house. A woman to be trusted. He could have whispered to her, take it, keep it for me. Your imagination is quite Shakespearean. Hmm. We shall have to take steps about Madame Caroline Louisa. May a weak woman make a suggestion, my star bright Abner? Is it not more likely that he handed it to the bishop? There he was, you see, really in luck, 
amongst the most respectable company in the county. It is only too likely, my Empress, and if he gave it to the bishop, it'll be in the cathedral vaults by now, and those vaults Guy Fawkes and all his gunpowder couldn't get through yet. That's where the box is now. My celestial one, it's almost Christmas. The whole cathedral staff will be working overtime preparing for the thousandth anniversary. The bishop won't have given a thought to the vaults. He's thrown the box into a drawer amongst his collars and his handkerchiefs. Just you see if he hasn't. My precious pearl, my blue and yellow sapphire, I should only like to see if he hasn't. All those fools who let it slip through their fingers. I tell you, Sylvia, I'm tempted to get rid of Charles and his infernal ha-ha what? Oh, but my emerald, my ruby, he's one of our most precious workers. Get rid of Charles? Whatever for? He's in charge of nobbling and scrobbling, and it all goes wrong. Oh, but my own, my very own Abby. You must never think of getting rid of Charles. Can't you see he's our only buffer against the stupidity of Job? And can't you see he's the only real friend we have? You do see. I see you see. My golden idol, my graven image. You must never, never be so foolish as to let Charles go. Ah, oh, the little lady. Remember, the old man may have given the box to her. Be that as it may, she's very promising. I should like to bring her in with us. Come. This way. Go straight through. Oh, Miss Maria, how good of you to come. Yes, well, I'd like to know what I'm here for. Well, my dear, someone was saying that you're very interested in stained glass. Who, me? Child, we are making up a party to go over to St Griswold's this morning. We shall have lunch there, look at the glass, and you can be back at Seekings by tea time. You will join us. It's a mouldy lot of glass at St Griswold's, isn't it? In the main church, yes, but um, in the Lady Chapel. All English glass is mouldy, if you ask me. I think you'll find this isn't English. Oh? Uh, Carolingian. Well, my dear, would you like to run home and leave word that you'll be out until tea time? Oh, bother that. Then I can look after myself. I've generally got a pistol or two on me, and I'm dead shot with both hands. How you must enjoy the quiet atmosphere of school. School? I've been expelled from three. The headmistresses still swoon when they hear my name. I count it a great honour to entertain so distinguished an ornament to her sex. Shall we start? Two of them are dressed as curates. Two of them? 
Oh, Master Kate, that was your guardian. Sarah Louisa, what'd she say? She'll be home tonight on the 817. I told her you'd be over at Tatchester at the Punch and Judy show. Well, if we're not back, you can ask the Rupert Arms to send a car over to pick her up. Is her brother all right? Much better, she said. Well, that's something. Thank you, Ellen. You'll catch your death if you go outside to play. The rain is coming down. Very well. We'll stay in. Yes, sir. No trouble at all. Well, things is easy when Miss Mariah isn't here to contradict. Mrs. Calamine, would you mind if I asked you a question about one of your guests? That depends, Master Kay, on the question. And possibly on the guest. Well, could you tell me, please, who are those clergymen who are here this morning? That's a Reverend Dr. Bottledale, his wife, his chaplain and his private secretary. He's the head of the Theological Training College over at Chester's, in the Chester Hills. But he couldn't be. I thought he was a Mr. Brown, a Mr. Abner Brown. Abner? That's a foreign name, is it not? Oh, no, no, no. He's very well known and a very holy gentleman. His wife, Mrs. Bottledale, wears the most lovely jewels. She reminds me of someone I've seen hereabouts before. It's always on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember who. Hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Kellermine. The Reverend Dr. Bottledale, a pillar of the church, a man of the utmost respectability. We have sung in the Glee Club with him, time and time again. I've seen him creeping around a in the A very room. sweet tenor, Master Harker. I don't see how he can be the Reverend anyone. <sighs> Master Harker, you have come home if I may say so, a little faint from the strain of learning. Your nerves want food. I've often noticed it in young fellows back from school. Mariah, she's been scrubbing. If your young friend is with the Reverend Bottledale, she's in good hands. As to her not being back home yet, weren't you supposed to be at the Christmas show at the Bishop's Palace in Tachester? And Miss Mariah with you? Well, then, if she's gone to St Griswold's to look at that old glass... Why should she come all the way back to Seekins, hmm? She'll have stayed in Tachester for tea and gone direct to the Bishop's Palace. <laughs> Depend upon it. Of course. I hadn't thought of that. That's very likely what's happened. <laughs> now then, you get that nice guardian of yours to see that you take a strong posset every night. A strong what? Uh, of course, you young folks in this generation, you don't know what a posset is. A posset is a jorum of hot milk. And in that hot milk, you put an egg. And you put a spoon for a treacle. And a grate in the nutmeg. And then you stirs them well up. And then you gets into bed. And you takes it down hot. And a posset like that taken overnight will make a new man of your Master Harker. Well, now you're all worn down with learning. Understand? No. What's a jorum? Ah, a jorum is a gigantic. Never mind, Inspector. Thank you very much. I'll remember. A posset. I'm going to lock you up. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's the way to do it. Oh, yes, it is. 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 Oh, yes, it is.
Mr. Pugs. Will you promise me you'll be very good from now on? I will. Is that his voice, do you think? I do, really. And so, Punch and Judy's tale is done. A happy Yuletide, everyone! (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure we all enjoyed Punch and Judy as given in the traditional style by... Who was it again, Mr. Cole Hawkins? Right now, into the other room, everyone, for your Christmas surprise. Your Grace, hmm? please, if it's possible, could I talk to the Punch and Judy man? Well, I think he's leaving already. Someone's coming to take him off in a car, he said, his throat being so sore with the Christmas performances. Oh. Come along, Kay, come on. Now, are we all ready? Yes! One, two, three! Ooh. Right, now I want no riots here. Come and get your Christmas presents one by one. Everybody's got one. And the other side. the music. Right, now, everybody, you all got your presents. Now, I want you to get a cracker each. Come on, and then I want you to form two circles, one circle in the middle, and the other circle round the other, on the outside. Come along, in the middle, there. that's right. Well, well done. Come along here now. During the party, we've had a burglary. Every room has been turned absolutely upside down. Peter, don't think your sister Mariah could have been in with the gang that did the burglary. And you heard Abner Brown say he liked her style. And knowing her, that a flatterer enough to... Well, if she has, I think that's the purple pimp. Shh. We heard what you said, and I'm sure we don't agree. Mariah would never have had a hand in it, except to collar all the swag and bring it back to its owners. They did take all the necklaces and jewels and such belonging to the bishop's guests. It might be ordinary thieves, not your villains at all. Oh, there you are. You didn't get wet. That's a mercy. Ellen. Give us some good news. Tell us Miss Mariah's come home. I'm sorry, Master Kay. There's no sign of her. Oh, and the Rupert's Arms sent a car to the station, but your guardian wasn't on the train. Well, hasn't she telephoned? No, she hasn't. So I rang her brother's number in London, and they said she'd left to catch the train, so they didn't know where she could be. The trains get all upset at Christmas time, and in weather like this. Yes. Yes, with all the snow. Maybe the train couldn't get through. And she had to come by car. And she'll be here any minute. I do wish Mariah would turn up. Mariah's quite capable of taking care of herself. Come on, Susan. Time for bed. It's not my place, Master Kay, but do you think you should telephone the inspector? What? The bloodhound of the law? Tomorrow morning, perhaps, if they're still not back. 
Ellen, can you make a posset? Indeed I can. Well, I wish you would. Drink it right down now. Sweet dreams. Thank you. They tell me the wolves are running. of them. You'll see a white fleeced lamb peacefully feeding, getting closer and closer to you, till suddenly it pounces. It's no lamb, with two wolves under a fleecy skin. You watch out, young Kay. Okay. You've been snoring like a pig. <laughs> the morning paper's full of the burglary at the Bishop's Palace. Nothing about a missing girl, I suppose. After breakfast, I'll go and see the inspector. I know he'll only tell me to take a posse and leave everything to the bloodhounds of the law. Master Kay, a telegram. From my guardian. Trains held up by floods. Stop. Return to brothers. Stop. Hope to see you tomorrow. Caroline Louisa. Oh, that is a relief. <gasps> Funny, she usually puts love, Caroline Louisa. Oh well. Good. Now we don't have to go to the inspector. What should we do then? I thought we'd do something different to take our minds. I know. Let's take the boat I got from under the Christmas tree and sail it on the floods. A mud rock! Splendiferous! <laughs> Soggy old ground. 
That's no ordinary play. There's someone coming. They couldn't be after us, could they? Of course not. They're probably mole catchers coming to set traps. When did you hear of mole catchers with pistols coming in aeroplanes? Let's try and get to the farm. The mill's closer. They've beat us to either of those. Come here. What? Come here. Hold hands. Hurry up. Hold hands. What on earth are you doing? Amazing. Gosh, Gosh, look at that. Look. Kay, look at your boat. Come on. Stay here. Jeff? Come on! Move! 